$21 million into energy efficiency, you'll get much back to rate, more back to ratepayers in ratepayers' pockets than that $21 million. And yesterday is an example. I'm meeting with my quarterly meeting with uh, Janet Lombardier at IBM. And I meet with them quarterly, talk about how we can grow jobs, economic opportunities, keep IBM strong. And she said to me, you know, this discussion about the 21 million, I find interesting. When GMP was purchased by Gas Metro, we had paid the same premium for G Mountain Power's above market cost during the Hyperbole Beck deal. And it amounted to about $1.3 million that we paid in, because they're a big user, to Green Mountain Power that we felt we should get back. And our public service board ruled, no, instead, you're going to use that $1.3 million for energy efficiency. And so they did. And they took that $1.3 million and they invested it in one year in a system that cools their air. And in the first year, they saved $300,000. In the second year, they saved $700,000. And they now save that $700,000 every single year. So over a 10-year period, you're talking about multiple millions of savings to that particular energy efficiency investment. So this whole conversation, in my judgment, has gotten distracted from the real facts. The facts are the Department of Public Service did an extraordinary job getting a great deal for ratepayers. It's going to save them 150 million bucks, get us a controlling issue in Val uh, 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 seat, seat on the board and a much more controlling piece of Valco, 38%. A million bucks from that that goes to low-income Vermonters in energy efficiency investments that are going to save us huge benefits. And I just want to talk about the problem from the other way. Imagine for a minute that the board ruled to pass out checks. Go for it. You know, let's say they, that they make that judgment. There are real problems there, too. Twelve years later, many of the people that paid in that money are no longer in those homes or no longer alive. Second, for the big money that goes back, which is corporations, it's hard to get that money back to the original people as well. Take Omia as an example. Huge CBPS customer. Probably as big as Green Mountain Power IBM, relatively. Omia is no longer owned by the people who paid the money in. So you can go on for numerous examples about how tough it is, whether it's the 21 million getting that back or sending checks back. I just think AARP is dead wrong on this one. And let's leave it to the board to determine what the best thing to do is. Why shouldn't the $21 million, though, come from the shareholders who are becoming quite enriched in some cases as a result of this deal, instead of from work-a-day ratepayers who are having to fund this $21 million? I would, argue that, I would argue that the ratepayers are going to save much more than $21 million <coughs> if we invest $21 million in energy efficiency. It's jobs, it's savings, it's the, yeah, that's not the, the, the question. Though, has to do with where, the, where, the, where is the where is the twenty one million dollars coming from? It's either going to come from shareholders, but the or it's going to come me, from ratepayers. But I think you're missing the question. I really feel this strong. The question to me is, how do you take the merger of a utility and get the best possible deal for ratepayers that you can? We're getting them one hundred and fifty million dollars in the first ten years, much more than that going forward other benefits, and when you negotiate a deal like this, it's just like a bill that passes the legislature. There are parts of it that you're going to like, parts of it that you're not going to like. My job as governor is to get the best deal possible for ratepayers, and we believe we got that deal. Governor, if the board feels differently, more power to them. When did you, uh, when the process did you first understand that $21 million would come from ratepayers? Um, how? When did you get into those weeds? I got into those weeds as soon as I had the, the uh, explanation of the settlement with Green Mountain Power that we negotiated described me by the commission. In other words... So just, just a couple weeks ago? Well, I've been updated on the negotiations uh, for some time. But in terms of this particular piece, yeah, when, it, when uh, the final uh, negotiations had been completed and we had beat Green Mountain Power pretty hard, uh, I had the details of the arrangement described to me, and that was obviously a part of it. Did you bring up that component in your internal discussions about whether that was something that uh, perhaps investors should pay for that instead of ratepayers, or was that just well, not you something know, that you... I, I understood the logic of that particular piece. What I really wanted to make sure of was that we were getting the best value <coughs> we possibly could from this merger for ratepayers, and I'm convinced we did. 
This particular piece happened to be exactly what the Public Service Board ordered last time we had an identical deal. <coughs> it happened to have been supported by AARP at the time in writing. Uh, it seemed logical that it would be dealt with in exactly the same way, and it still does. How hard could you have pushed them if they've signed on to this deal? Shouldn't you be pushing this utility further than they want to go and say, we, make your we, case to the Public Service Board and say, hey, they don't think that they owe this, but we think they do? We are convinced that we got a better deal that we beat on the merged company to the point where we felt it was likely that we were getting a better deal for ratepayers than we would have gotten for the board. That's why we signed the agreement. What about, sorry. So what are your thoughts on um, you know, the House committees having hearings on this yesterday, even contemplating drafting legislation? What are your thoughts on that meeting this happened yesterday? Well, I think one of the things that came out of that hearing was that the House leadership felt very strongly, as I do, that uh, the Public Service Board, we have confidence in their ability to do their job, and that anyone who wants to argue about pieces of this arrangement or the whole thing in terms of the merger uh, should do so before the board. And I think that's what came out of the hearing. I agree. So does it bother you that they called the hearing now? Absolutely not. Does it bother you that, that your case, you seem to be having a hard time making your case to the rank and file members of both houses of the legislature, and perhaps nobody's taken a poll, but it seems, to the general public. There's well, you know, I, I understand that these rate cases are incredibly, and mergers in particular, are pretty complex. I also understand that, you know, there are some entities out there that are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on direct TV and mail every 30 seconds. And, you know, we know that we don't have the resources to do that. All I can say is there is a time where a governor has to stand up and do what is right for ratepayers and taxpayers. I believe that our department has negotiated a deal that I never thought they would get, better than I thought they would get, that's gonna save Vermonters 150 million bucks over 10 years. That's a great thing for Vermont. Let's not forget what we're talking about here. Listen, CVPS made the decision to sell. We didn't make that decision. As I've said many times, if CVPS could have remained a Vermont company, I would have been happier, Vermonters probably would have been happier. But understanding that a private company has decided to sell itself to somebody else, my job as governor was to determine, of the buyers, what was the best deal for ratepayers. And I've been committed to getting that best deal from day one. I believe we got it. Let's go back to the other bidder, Fortis. You know, when I sat with Fortis to have discussions about what their deal meant for Vermont, and I said to the CEO, what, I understand this is great for your stockholders. What's it mean for the people that elected me? What's it mean for rates? He looked me in the eye and said, rates don't matter, Governor. You're looking at the wrong thing. I almost fell out of my chair. I mean, we had two choices here, not six or seven or eight or nine. There were two choices. I instructed my department to negotiate the best possible deal they could for ratepayers. We believe we got it. Let's find out whether the board agrees with us or not. You think one of the issues, though, in terms of making it clear to the public is that the net present value of this is uh, 16 bucks a year over 10 years for a CD rate payer and $117 a year for a GMP rate payer. So all I can say, and John, is you, can look, to you can look at this any way you want, but it is a co private company selling its stock to another private company that's regulated. And the question for us is, is there a better choice? If you can show me a better choice, I'm all ears. There were two buyers. We took the deal that we thought was best for Vermonters and Vermont rate payers. We then hammered on that company to make it even a better deal. We think we drove them as far down the pike as we can get them, and let's let the board see whether we did or not. Governor, can you give a look? I'm glad we have this 21 million, because it's distracting you guys from the real issues of the day. We're getting a lot past here while you're focused. Can I ask you one more question about that 21 million? The, um, so uh, uh, Senator Brock and Kurt Wright both referred to a letter um, by uh, Mary Durfee, who's a, I think she's in her 70s, yeah. lives in St. Albans. Have you seen anything about that letter? I just read it. Just, just the accounts yeah. of it. So um, this woman's point is that they've invested, you know, year after year in energy efficiency in their own homes, um, and they don't believe the bill is going to benefit down the road from the energy efficiency measures. Um, they just want their money back. What do you say specifically to a person in that situation? Um, I'd say Because, you know, you made that point about the right. broader context. Let me answer the question. This is yeah. what I would say, and I'll close on this one. Listen, it is not a coincidence, it's not a coincidence that I've been governor for a little more than 16 months. I've managed the biggest blizzard ever recorded in Vermont. 
We've managed the April storms, the May storms, where the highest levels ever recorded on Lake Champlain were recorded. Then we managed Eileen, the worst storm ever to hit Vermont. We just came through in March, where we didn't know whether we were going to have 40 degrees or 70 degrees on any given day, breaking all records. That this is the fundamentally most important thing Vermont can do for Vermont's future, is to use less energy, put money in Vermonters' pockets, create jobs, and ensure that we have, are using less energy going forward. There is no more important cause we have collectively than that. And if it requires some of us uh, who have already completed energy efficiency initiatives, ensuring that other people have access to those, I see it no different than our obligation to educate Vermont's kids in public schools. People who don't have children don't say, hey, I'm not paying my school property tax because I don't have kids in school. And the logic is no different. We have a responsibility to lead in Vermont, to use less power, create jobs, not send our energy dollars to countries that mostly don't like us, and continue to ensure that every Vermonter has the opportunity to change out their windows, their doors, insulate their homes. We have a collective responsibility, and it's just as important as public education. You can't opt out of public education, and you shouldn't opt out of energy efficiency. Thank you. Thank you.